Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, how our crew took a stand against exploitative companies. The second story, neighborly nightmare, when good intentions lead to property disputes. The third story, when a boisterous guest faces an unexpected blow of karma. The first story is, after being screwed by a tree planting company, our whole crew up and quit, foreman and all. I worked as a tree planter in Canada, which is a rough job on a good day. How it works is you get paid by the tree, so if you're just starting out, you basically get paid nothing. You also have to foot a camp cost, which cuts into what you make. You're typically hired onto a crew by the foreman of that crew who makes a cut of the total number of trees put into the ground by their crew. I was hired onto a crew of all new planters by a good foreman. He had a plan to build a crew from the ground up, so he handpicked and hired all new people, and was going to build a lean, mean planting crew. It was a bit of a hit to him financially because he was paid on our production, but he knew what he was doing and once we caught on, we were a pretty tight-knit group of bush people. We worked for a company that will remain unnamed, though needless to say, things were not as we hoped. Our foreman had worked for them for years and had nothing but good things to say about them at the start of the season. But as time went on, things went downhill fast. We start off with a bad contract, which meant low pay for everyone involved. We were all fresh and learning the ropes, so we did what we could, worked hard and made the best of it. Crappy contract happen in tree planting, so you do what you can and move on to the next. The next one was a bit better. Prices were low, but it was significantly better than the first contract. We were starting to really get into the work making some cash. Some of the people in the camp were weeded out as it's a tough job, and a lot of people can't hack it. Our crew had a pretty low attrition rate, partially because our foreman was careful on who he hired, and partially because we were pretty tight. We moved on to our next contract and this turned out to be a qualified SH show. Prices were crap, ground was crap and some days we'd spend hours driving to and from where we were working. If you're driving, you're not planting and you're not getting paid. I don't know if the company man running the camp had it out for us, had a problem with our foreman, or was just a D, but we kept getting sent out on these BS jobs to fix stuff that other crews had screwed up or blocked so far away that we'd spend half the day in the truck or what, but nobody was happy. Another crew in the camp had a truck roll off the road which is a bit of a bad omen. To top it off, the food had gone to hell in camp which is never a good thing. After one particularly demoralizing day, our crew had a chat, and we're all starting to realize that this wasn't going to turn around. Most of us being students were watching our summer chance to make some cash for tuition disappear pretty d fast. Word got to the camp foreman that people were getting peeved so there was a camp meeting set up. Near the end of the meeting a sheet of paper was put down that we all had to sign on to that basically said we'd shut up and like it for the rest of the season or we could leave. Our whole crew, foreman and all, just walked out. A few other planters from other crews left too but we were by far the majority. I'd say about half went home and half including myself got on with other tree planting crews. My experience after that with other camps made it very clear that we were being screwed heavily by that company, and there's no doubt in my mind that it was the right thing to do. Still feel bad for how that company treated our foreman though. He was one of the most loyal and hardworking people that I've ever met. Your story of how you and your team decided to stand up for yourselves and your rights is amazing. When you saw that you were being cheated and treated unfairly, you decided not to be silent but to act. Your decisive action demonstrates your willpower and integrity. It is truly admirable that your entire team, including your supervisor, has made the decision to physically leave the workplace in order to protest the unfairness and lack of scruples displayed by your employer. It has been demonstrated beyond a reasonable doubt that you're a powerful group that's willing to defend your interests. In addition, your consciousness of justice and concern for your boss reflects your high sense of morality and respect for those who deserve it. Your story is a shining example of the importance of staying true to your principles and avoiding exploitation and injustice. You're to be commended for your courage and determination. The second story is, my neighbor tried to build a fence in the last 20 feet of our lot so that she could have a driveway into the back of her lot. So backstory, we have a 0.4 of an acre lot. Why it's not 0.5 or 0.3 is weird. That's long and skinny with an alleyway road on the left side, and my neighbor has the same size lot as ours on the right, with another neighbor who has a fully fenced yard on the other side of her. 
Anyway, when we bought our house, our lot was not fully fenced. For some reason, only half the lot was fenced. The rest was open and our neighbor's was the same way. Well, my neighbor has a fully concrete shed that was built within six feet of our fence. And up to the shed was a full concrete driveway that just kind of stopped and dropped off about three feet of the shed. So there was no way for her to drive a vehicle or anything into her back lot. I'm still confused as to why she always wanted to park behind her shed and not in the actual driveway. Before she moved into the house was vacant. It was owned by an older couple who didn't do anything with it, except stop by once or twice a year and spray weeds. Well, when they did this, they would drive through the very back of our lot in a small truck and spray the weeds from the truck. No big deal. They were nice and never bothered us. We did check with the city to see if they had a right of easement through our property, and there was none, so we let it be. Well, when she moved in a couple of years later, apparently since we weren't using our back lot, she would just drive through to her lot. At first we thought, well, she's just moving in, so we'll let her do it until she gets settled. So my husband went and told her that since it's hard to access the back of the lot, that she could go through ours until she was done moving. A couple weeks go by and she had some diet brought in to make a kind of ramp from the concrete drop that she could squeeze her car between the fence and her shed. So we thought that was the end. Nope. We noticed that she would still drive through our lot, then go to the ramp and park in her driveway. Then she starts having friends and family come over. Some would park in the driveway or street, but to our surprise a lot of them would come through the back, and not at the end of our lot, but all over. We had rain and saw deep ruts, and that was the last straw. My husband was peeved, so I being the calm one, went over and told her that since she was moved in, I could she and her friends not drive through our lot since she now had access to her back lot from her own property. She said sure, no problem. She apologized for her friends tearing up our lot and was really nice about it. So I said goodbye and went home. The next day I came home from work around 3 p.m. and saw a guy laying out chain link in my neighbor's lot. I thought awesome, she's putting a fence up. That'll look nice. Maybe we should finally fence our yard too. So I went inside my house and listened to the sound of pounding fence poles. An hour or so later I go outside to run to the store and look to see how the fence is coming. To my horror, the guy isn't putting the fence between our properties, but across the last 20 feet of my property to hers. OMG. I called the police immediately. I don't lose my cool very often, but after getting off the phone I ran up to the guy and demanded who he was and what the hell he was doing. He looked totally confused and said he'd been hired by my neighbor to build a fence for right of easement of her property. Oh hell no. By that time my neighbor noticed BBN I was out there and came up all sweet wondering what the problem was. I told her what the problem was and she said, oh, well you said I could when we talked yesterday. Um, no, that's definitely not what we talked about. By this time an officer rolls up, so I told him my story and he tells her to take down the fence. Well, she tells him that it's an easement to her property. F, I thought. If this goes further, we might really lose this part of our property to her. Luckily, the officer was smart and asked if this was a legal easement with the city and if she had proof. She said no, but she does have an easement. I said that was news to me because when we checked, there was no easement through our property. She said, yes, I have an easement, but it's through the property on the right side of me, except they have a fence. Oh, thank God. The officer told her to pull up the fence in my property and to take up the easement with the other neighbor. She did as instructed, and the officer stayed until it was done. As Ware was leaving, he told me to prepare for civil action of some kind with her. Luckily, it's been a couple of years since, and we finally fenced off the rest of our road. We haven't had any problems with her since, and notice that the other neighbors on her right still have their fence intact. We have learned that our neighbor is bad sh crazy, so we have very little contact. Lesson learned. Sometimes being neighborly can bite you in the A. This is simply inconceivable. Angry rage is raging inside of me. Your neighbor seems to have turned into a real bully, trying to enter your territory without any respect for your rights. Her desire to build a fence in the last 20 feet of your property only confirms her arrogance and irresponsibility. How could anyone even come up with the idea that this was acceptable? She seems to think that the world revolves around her, ignoring the rights of other people. Her act of building a fence without your consent is a pure manifestation of selfishness and ignorance, and her attempt to justify herself to the police only emphasized her dishonesty and desire to deceive them. It's sad to have to deal with neighbors like this, and I'm glad you eventually handled this situation. But this story clearly demonstrates that being a good neighbor can sometimes be very risky and can lead to unpleasant consequences. The third story is... Delayed Karma. I hate weekend shifts. Our hotel is a small one which is basically an easy and cheap taxi ride away from town. 
We're also local to a few bars and other party places, so we tend to be rather busy on weekends. Some weekends, as most night workers will know, are nice and easy. But when you get that group that plays up, it makes life hell. This evening, I've had a rather large group of young adults staying with us. Earlier, they all came in and, well, to my surprise, were quiet. Well, almost all of them. One woman came in being louder than an effing air raid siren. Her and boyfriend came to me and asked me for some more towels. I went to get them and they both came with me to the linen room to grab them. I gave it to them and the woman was talking to the guy louder than she should be. She didn't seem drunk, but God, someone never taught her how to use her indoor voice. I gave them the towels and just politely asked her to keep it down. She just looked at me confused and then ripped into me for no reason, coming out with some hurtful comments before storming off. The guy looked at me and apologized before following her. Now we do hourly walks around the building to make sure it's quiet. And well, thank God we're not fully booked tonight, or we would be getting stupid amounts of noise complaints in the morning. A few doors down from this couple's room is some stairs to which I come out to walk through the bottom floor on my way back to reception. And as I entered the stairwell, I could hear them while walking down the stairs. When I say them, I mean her. I kinda stood still a few doors down listening to her. And I heard her saying to this guy about effing his ex following with, I bet she felt better than me. And then shouted, don't call me a psycho. From what I could understand, he had cheated on her with his ex, and she just found out, to which he said she was overreacting, and called her a psycho and she didn't take it well. I wanted to listen to more, but I heard a door opening from the other side of the hall to this couple, and it was one of the people from the same group. I made out like I was just walking back to reception from just coming out of the stairs, and walked back talking to him. He told me he worked nights at a hotel a couple hours away from the hotel I work at, and spoke about work clearly trying to put off the loud guest issue. He was getting something from the vending machine, to which I asked was the couple in the other room okay, as well it didn't sound good. He told me that they went into this play area place nearby. This place does like adult hours which is just get peeved and have fun on the slides. The guy told me that the girl in the room went down a slide and burnt up her back on it and that's why she was a bit grouchy at the moment. I don't know what a slide burn has to do with this guy sleeping with his ex, but okay. I just found it funny how she ripped into me for doing my job and got some karma back later. The woman in this story made a strong impression on me with her aggressive and unpleasant behavior. Her unwarranted attacks and rudeness are repulsive. However, the irony of fate was revealed when she had an unpleasant experience on the children's slide. This moment shows that karma can sometimes be unexpectedly fair. Perhaps this incident will serve as a lesson to her about the importance of respecting others and controlling your behavior. Subscribe, click the like button if you want to support the channel. Thank you for watching.